Hello everybody, who is ready to die horribly time and time and time again, light years away from home? I know I am, and I hope you are too, and I guess that's my way of saying welcome to Teleglitch. This is a top-down, roguelike-ish shooter. It is um, a lot of fun, I really enjoy it, and that's weird because it has a lot going against it. I'm not always the biggest fan of roguelikes, in part because I'm not particularly great at them. I'm not good at video game. And this thing is hard. This is a very hard video game. It has been described by one review I saw as Dark Souls with the wheels taken off. I think that's kind of a crappy description because the two games are almost nothing alike. But the difficulty is the point there for you to understand. It is kind of cliche in its story. I mean, it's a sci-fi environment. We work for a big multi-galaxy... Um, arms company, a weapons company, researching teleporter technology. Has something gone wrong? Will the AI go wonky? Will we be beset by monsters from all sides? Durr. Um, That's pretty much a given at this stage. It has a crafting system and roguelike elements, so it's a sort of paint-by-numbers of what's worked recently. But for all that, I really dig it, and I put that down to both the fact that there are a ton of collectibles, which honestly... Um, are like catnip to me. I love those things. These are all uh, things you can find in-game from different terminals, the story items here. There is a big crafting system and we are able to craft uh, everything. I have I have built almost all of these weapons and I have used all of them. Uh, the only the one I have yet to build is the can in here. I know what it takes, but this line of gibberish will turn into a recipe once I've actually crafted the thing once. Uh, I used it in a special arena mode without ever finding it in-game. Uh, and this guy over here is completely ungettable in-game, so the game is not technically 100% complete. It's done enough to be fun, but this is supposed to be a small armor. Not gettable. Anyway, uh, all this stuff, you'll find the materials for and you'll craft it. And um, I'll tell you why I don't mind that in a minute, but anyway, there's plenty of monsters, likewise. It may seem like I have not faced any of these guys yet, but I promise I have. They just they don't unlock when you kill the monster. Uh, it's a little buggy again. Uh, so there's both the feel of the game, the excellent, excellent environment, the sound design, which I'll talk about, and the fact that there's all these little fun unlockables. Uh, the only other thing to jump into or to talk about before we jump in is that random starting gear is turned on for me. Non-random starting gear is like a 9mm pistol and some ammo, whereas random, you, uh, you get any number of things. Some are great, some are terrible. So, uh, the point of this LP, as I'm seeing it, is I think you should play this game. It is fun enough that I think people of all skill levels will enjoy it. Again, I'm not good at video game, but it in the difficulty curve can be a little intense. But that's what I'm seeing is the point of this, of this LP. I would like to take you through what I've learned and the skills that I've... Uh, mastered or at least gotten competent at that allowed me, somebody who's not good at video game, to beat this a difficult game. Uh, there's definitely no guarantee that we'll be doing this through in one take. In fact, my guess is I'll do all of these in segments. Um, you start off on level one, all these are locked, you have to get to level five, and that unlocks level three. And then from there, I think you have to get to level seven to unlock, starting at level five, nine to start at level seven and get to level ten the final level to unlock starting at level nine they give you different starting gear which is non-randomized if you start at three three b five seven or nine um, and it's all actually fairly decent they give you a good shot at progressing onwards with the gear that they give you obviously if you play through yourself you can probably build up a stronger character but uh, we'll talk more about that as we go there is a tutorial but since i will be your tutorial let's just jump right on in to level one um, I'll be posting screenshots of all the story type stuff on the thread, but none of it is particularly interesting. Okay, so um, I will quickly summarize the story for anybody that missed it. Basically, we are a, an employee of this huge multinational, multi-galaxy corporation. Uh, they are doing various things, something went horribly wrong, and now we hid in the storage closet until our all food ran out, represented by those four empty cans we were in here with. We were also able to grab an elephant rifle, which is a very good piece of starting gear, in fact. It is a two-barreled hunting shotgun, and it is uh, uses shotgun rounds, which we can find ammunition for early, and it is more than capable of handling anything we will find on these first few levels. So, controls are WASD, map is tab, uh, you scroll through your inventory with the scroll button, and very important, you press E and move the scroll tab to 
move things around. Keeping your inventory uh, reachable and organized is of paramount importance because there are a lot of different situations in this game that require a lot of different things. So let's get out of here. The first thing you may notice is that there's no background music, and that is true throughout the game. It is all ambient background sounds, and for a tense game like this, I think that works really well. Uh, also, you'll be noticing the sort of pixely graphics, and oh goodness, you'll be noticing the, uh, the horde of baddies. This is kind of a crappy first room. This is a lot, but you know what? We're going to roll with it, and I'll see what I can't show off. So, uh, about combat. In these first few levels, typically, you're going to want to use a lot of the knife. Knife is accomplished by pressing uh, just the uh, left trigger key when you're not holding anything else down. Any of these guys take two hits with the knife to kill, just like that. You can actually see some cosmetic differences. Oh, gosh. More. Um, on their sprites. And if you're doing the knife work, you're going to want to run in sort of a circle like I'm doing. Now, I'm not doing horribly here, but I could be doing better. Um, truly, I should be able to escape from this confrontation, taking no damage at all. This is the M1 Mutant, which is the basic type of enemy. Basically, they only do two damage to you if they hit you, which is ludicrously low for what we'll see in some of the later enemies. My goodness, they're piling them onto me in here. Uh, and they are a bit slower than you even your basic speed, so you're going to want to do kind of a matador thing and run around them. Uh, 10 damage actually isn't horrible for only using the uh, knife. Now I could have, if I wanted to, opened up with some uh, weapons fire here, and the way you do that is you press... let me wait till this guy sort of gets around me. One of the key things in this game is sort of learning movements, and so these guys have a lot of lateral movement. They like to sort of shimmy side to side a little bit, and that means they're more apt to move in um, in particular arcs when they're running against you, and so knowing which way that they're likely to move can really help you in avoiding them. Now, this is the second type of enemy. This is a zombie. The first one is a mutant, uh, and zombies are basically just like the mutants, except they're smaller and they're faster, both of which are annoying. The zombies tend to run in those little spurts like that. You can see they move very fast and then slow down. Uh, if you want to, you can still take them out. They only take two knife hits. But since almost everybody else is dead, I think we're going to go ahead and show off the weapons. So it's left trigger to pull out the gun. And you can see you get that little aiming line there. Your movement speed is much reduced when the gun is out, so you want to make sure that you're ready to aim. And uh, uh, ammunition is very precious in this game. And so it is probably desirable to sort of corral enemies before dealing with them in such a way. So it's left trigger to aim, and right trigger to shoot. Now you saw it was one bullet just disintegrated the zombie and hurt the uh, mutant there, and they were easily take downable after that. All right, so so much for that. Um, in this first level, as I say, we will be using the knife. And one of the things I appreciate about this game is every resource is valuable in this game. Health is extremely valuable. Ammo is extremely valuable. And I've read a lot of reviews of people who said they had a really tough time getting past um, level 2 or 3. And the only reason I can really think of for that is because they're not conserving ammo on level 1. Any time you can get away without firing a round is excellent in this first level. And you really shouldn't have too much. Alright, now we just ran into an excellent example of the next thing I wanted to show off, which is... Notice this little crack in the wall up here. And notice the small block shape of the walls. That means... It's time to reload. And then it means it's a secret. You fire enough at these walls, and they just get blown away. You can get back here and get all kinds of goodies. Okay, this is a can gun. Uh, can guns are a lot of fun, and they demonstrate one of the things that I really appreciate about this game. I don't know if I can get back through here. Which, as I said before, is sort of the game feel. Let's see if they will let me through. I'd rather not waste more ammo blowing up more of this wall, but I might have to here. And I guess I will. Oh well. Uh, R is to reload, incidentally. Or you can keep firing once you're out of ammo, but that's not recommended because, um, you know, it's always good to have a full clip or whatever. As you can see, uh, ammo goes fast, even for just little stuff like this. Okay, so can gun is uh, very important for reasons that will come up here shortly. Um, but first, I guess, let's talk about crafting and about items in the game. Um, 
Did I miss the empty cans up here? Weird. Um, anyway. Uh, so here... Oh! <laughs> duh, I moved him down here already. I'm slow. Okay, uh, so we picked up these green items. A nail box, which is just a bunch of nails and empty cans. And we've got these RDX250s, and those are explosives. Um, you can either place them or throw them. They blow up and take out lots of enemies. One of them probably would have taken out almost this entire room here if it was placed or thrown correctly. Or you can press C and open up the crafting menu. So with a nail box and a small explosive, I can make some nail ammo. That's for a nail gun, which we'll be getting later. Uh, I can also make a nail bomb, which is very useful for these kind of situations where there's a lot of little enemies. Or I can tie two of these RD RDX 250s together to make an RDX 500, which is basically just taping two sticks of dynamite together. Um, I can also make cannon rounds, but that's only because I've wielded the cannon gun, and so most new players will not be able to craft these even if you have the equipment for it. So, again, it's C to open and close the crafting menu, so let's make an RDX 500. And as you can see, with an RDX 500 and some cans, I can make a Panzerfaust, which is a one-shot rocket launcher or a Panzerfaust AP. Uh, the AP, I think, takes one more can than just the regular Panzerfaust does. Panzerfaust APs are extremely useful, especially when it comes to stuff like the first boss of the game or the first boss-like encounter. But you know what? We will get into that more when it happens. Um, I forget if there was something else I was going to talk about. Oh yes, the can gun and the RDX 500. So one thing I said I really appreciated about the game was the way that it feels and the way that it plays. And one of the ways that, that comes out is how uh, sort of viscerally fun explosions are. The next time I get into a situation where I'm going to be fighting more than, say, one of the, uh, the mutants or zombies or something, I'll show off the can gun. You want to do it early. Can guns are a lot of fun, but not particularly useful, because every time you use one of these suckers, it takes away 10 health points from you. Um, it is literally just a tin can filled with nails and explosives. So for that, you think you need a can, nails, and, uh, an RDX, I think, 500. Okay, here we can see these are uh, terminals, and you access them with spacebar. They give you some information. Um, they're surrounded by those brackets before you've read them, and some are permanently surrounded with brackets, like this one. This one was giving me information about this uh, freaky little anomaly thing over here. This first one is fenced off, which is very nice to the game. Basically, the deal is you touch it at all, instant death, doesn't matter your health, doesn't matter your armor, uh, you just die. Likewise, however, if your opponents touch it, they are instantly consumed no matter who they are, which can be very handy in certain situations. Also, you may have noticed the brackets surrounding these handy um, storage bins. Now, as I said before, it's very important to keep your um, inventory sorted, and typically the way that I like to do that is weapons first, and then uh, attack items, and then heal items, and then crafting items down at the bottom. There's a fourth category we'll get into later. Anyway, so this is my first actual weapon that I would have gotten anyways, and this is the Adhesive Grenade Launcher, the AGL-1. I will show that off as well when the time comes, although it may be a level or two before I really get to a, a place where that would shine. Uh, this is what one of the terminals looks like. And as you can see, I'll be posting again in the thread all what the terminals say. I've already read these, so they don't get to have the little brackets around them. Now, you do get stacks of certain inventory items, which is nice, like the nail box and the empty cans. Uh, but they don't stack forever, and there are different amount of stacks for different items. You may notice that I'm checking my map a lot, and that is for a few reasons. One of which I will get into... Ah, check this out. Very nice. A, uh, another secret. There are variable numbers of secrets, and they are always welcome. Cool, there's shotgun shells and a nail bomb in here. Nail bomb I can show off pretty early, actually. Um, because I can use the... It's not quite as dangerous as the canned gun, and it's not quite as fun in my opinion, but it's still a good time. Okay, canned meat. This stuff is great. Um, it res restores 10 health. It gives you an empty can, which is very nice. You can see I can only store four empty cans, and I've started another stack. Uh, but the real nice thing about canned meat is because of all the awful steroids and hormones and all that. Hey, here we go. Here's two mutants. I feel sufficiently good about them to completely overkill and use a nail bomb. You want to be close to a door or something when you use one of these guys, because that's what it does. Wow. 
Uh, really do not know why I went down to 8 health there. But whatever, we'll use a uh, HP 50 thing and we'll keep on going. That's just one of the, part of the fun of uh, Teleglitch. I'm going to have to check the footage of that because I think even if I took a few nails to the face, it wouldn't have taken me down to 8. Whatever, we rush on, everybody. Um, my only goal is to make it to level 5 on this first run, so I should still be able to do that. Anyway, the real fun to canned meat is it, is, it will actually allow you to get above um, 100 health. It will take you all the way up to 150, which is very nice, very handy. Uh, regular health packs will only take you up to level 100. I guess it's because of all of the horrible um, things that are in there, hormones and things like that. So, uh, yeah, part of the danger to nail guns is that they do spray nails in every direction, which is you don't have to worry about that if you're using just the regular explosives. The difference is uh, nail bombs are not good for crafting things, whereas the rest of the explosives are. So I actually tend to keep the... Um, I tend to keep the explosives free for crafting. Still kind of bugs me that I took that much damage, though. And that doesn't seem right to me. But whatever. Anyway, um... There we go. There's really no reason not to eat uh, as much canned meat as you can right away. And the good thing is, now we have nine um, empty cans. All we need is six, and we can make a plate. Plates are great for reasons that will become obvious later. We will move this back down here. And check it out. We're almost all the way back up to uh, 100 health again after our accident. Whatever happened. I don't even know. I was expecting it to go down to maybe like 70 something. Oh well. Here's this guy. Ah, you know, the first one went bad enough, so what could possibly go wrong? I'll just show off the can gun and get it all over with. The can gun is fun because you know it's only going to do you 10 damage instead of that awful amount that uh, happened with them. So here goes this guy, and let's say that there were a lot of them after me. Boom! <laughs> oh, the can gun is lots of fun. It will paste just about anything that's in front of you for a really long time. Um, so, and we got another crafting material in the tube, so that's always nice. Tubes are really useful. They build a lot of things, so it's good to hang on to them. Nail boxes, unless you're going to get the nail gun, are really only good for nail bombs. There's not a whole lot else they do. So you may notice there's a lot of collapsed passages like that. That is part of the uh, semi-roguelike, if you want to call it that, environment that we're in. Because a, there, a lot of these rooms aren't exactly randomly generated. They are um, put together uh, beforehand. But they're connected in randomized ways. And so, um, obviously, not every passage out is going to be used for every set of connections. And so uh, that's where the collapsed passages come in. It's a neat way to handle things because the facility really has gone under some hard times. And so it makes sense that there would be a lot of collapse. I dig it. Um, so for knife skills, you want to be in a big room to use the knife against these guys. And because backing up and using the knife this way really doesn't work. Because they can put on these little bursts of speed that are just, they'll get you. Uh, it's a good way to lose health. And really, as I said, every point of health is precious. These guys only take off you know, two damage per swing, but you get four or five of them all swinging at you at once, and that's that. See that big white circle there? That is the teleporter. Um, that is my ticket out of here. And so, once you know where that is, there's really two ways to go about levels. You can just make a beeline for the teleporter and get out as soon as you possibly can, or you can explore everywhere and try to pick up everything that you can. Um, the big white circle is a teleporter. Small gray circles, which I think we've seen a couple of in the levels so far, are storage cabinets, and those are uh, great to keep out of lookout for. Sometimes those terminals that give you story information will also do stuff like, oh, tell you where uh, the teleporter is, tell you where the storage cabinets are, and that can help you decide if you really want to go down this passageway or not. Ooh, gosh, there's more of these guys. Uh, the one thing is they will not tell you where the uh, secrets are, and so it can always be helpful to go around for the secrets. Okay. Uh, this is actually a good time to show off the uh, Adhesive Grenade Launcher. The big thing about the Adhesive Grenade Launcher is everything sticks to it, and they stick to all, it sticks to everything, and it sticks to all sides of everything. So, if you've got a big swarm like this coming after you, fire a couple rounds of it, and all those enemies stick together, and you take out a couple of them at once, which is great. With that couple down, there's probably few enough now that I can afford to... I'm going to hit two at one with that. 
That's nice. That I can afford to uh, take out the rest of these guys with just knife skills. Again, the knife is... Uh, sort of useful for the rest of the game. It's really, it shines in these first two levels. Because the mutants and the zombies, you can really go after with them. Um, some threats later on, like there'll be some enemies that have weak armor but really strong weapons, which they won't use if you get right up on them. Um, and so it can be useful to go after them with a knife in that sense. But uh, it's really risky, and they do so much damage, it's almost worth it to more just practice precise gun work and take them out from a distance. That's at least how I beat it. The thing is, um, there's, so there'll be machine gun enemies later on who stop using their machine gun and just punch you with their own knife if you get close enough. And so a couple of rounds with that machine gun will just decimate you. So it's, it's worthwhile to get close to them and start knifing. However, if you messed up and instead of a machine gun enemy, it turns out that they are a, uh, oh, say, a uh, shotgun enemy, then they won't stop using their shotgun when you get close, and they will just explode you with the shotgun. You do not take many hits with a shotgun, even with full armor to go down. Alright, let's see if I can show off... Ooh, hello there. Let's see if I can show off void skills. Void skills are also more useful early on, but just like I said, a single touch by this thing is complete game over. So this is a dangerous game I'm playing. And you can do that too, where they get some free shots off on you if you're a chump. Uh, notice here that the scenery slows you down. Uh, but again, if you if you, they touch it, they're instantly dead. Now, so the void using void skills is more useful, I'd say, when there's like a ton of enemies after you. You know, if there's a whole rush of mutants or zombies or something, then sure you can pied piper them right into a void and not have to fire shots. The Void is almost more about not wasting ammo than it is about um, actually doing damage because, and this is the sad part, a lot of enemies in the later times don't go after you with this rush that you really need them to do uh, to get trapped in the Void. They go after you from a distance and they stand and fire. I have no idea what that was about. Why I took damage there. I said before that every point of damage is really valuable, so you don't want to lose anything that you can avoid. Now you may notice that I'm checking my map a lot, and that's for two reasons. The first is that I have a really crappy sense of direction, so it helps to keep me on task and on target. And the second is... Hey, hey! There's our third weapon. The shotgun. Um, the Fat Joan is probably superior to the shotgun in all but a few cases, and that's because I've got enough ammo that I can show this off. The Fat John fires a uh, burst like that, where the shotgun is much more spread out. Now, the advantages to the shotgun are that it has uh, 10 rounds as opposed to the Fat John's 2. You can craft some things with the shotgun that you can't with the, uh, the Fat John. So I think we'll hang on to it for now, but if push comes to shove, that'll be one of the first things we ditch. Uh, as I was saying, the other reason that I'm checking the map is if you find an area with very thin walls, that is a secret. And so even if you don't notice yourself, uh, it can be good to check the map and look for secrets. Okay, well that was definitely a mixed first level. Um, I wish I had been able to do that better, but you take the breaks you can get in Teleglitch. Uh, I am, we're going to have to pick up the pace later on. I mean, 76 health isn't the end of the world. We can make that up in the next level. Um, and we've got a lot of crafting materials. We've got a plate and a tube, shotgun, and, and the piece of grenade launcher, and some uh, explosives. So all that being said, we have a choice at this point. We can either go right to an abandoned plankton farm or left to a military biology sector. And when I'm given the choice between those two things, I think we know which way is the correct way to go. That's right, the coward's way. No, I'm not going to do the advanced one. I was just kidding. It's time for military biology! Level 3, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching me play Teleglitch.